and beyond. You heard the sheriff. Let's go. Relax. This is no time to panic. This is the perfect time to panic. Bonnie made a friend in class. Everyone, I want you to meet Porky. Trash, here I come! Shoot the left ramp. Shoot the spinner. Rescue Porky. Shoot the inner loop to spin the wheel. Duke Kaboom, Canada's greatest stuntman. Kaboom. Oh, we actually did that. Yes, I Canada! Hello, Woody. I knew you'd be back. I'm not leaving without Forky. Hey guys, long time no see. So long, partner. Hi, I'm Pat Lawler. I'm the game designer for Toy Story 4, and I'm very excited for you all to get to play the game. Toy Story 4 and the Toy Story franchise is Pixar's crown jewel. And we knew that we were gonna have to represent the product through their eyes for what they saw it as representative of what they do every day. And so I can't say enough about our interaction between the two corporations and the creative teams. We did some things that amazed them and they gave us some stuff that amazed us. You know, I, I, I'm really proud I was part of this, this game. Hi, I'm Joe Katz, lead programmer for Toy Story 4 by Jersey Jack Pinball. Very early on, it was obvious to me that this franchise means a lot to everyone, to Disney, to Pixar, to the world. It's such a classic theme. And I wanted to kind of bring the love I put into a, a theme and have Disney and Pixar see that mixed with their love that they put into their movies. This game is the result of merging those two passions together. I like teaching people pinball anyways, and the fact that I was teaching a Disney employee and a bunch of Pixar employees pinball, it just blew my mind. It was cool to be like, oh, and I wanna use this graphic to do this rule and then explain to them what the rule is and why I would do that and what this means in pinball. And it just opened their eyes to how intricate pinball is and how the rules are so fleshed into the theme. These are some of the greatest storytellers of all time. And for me to be able to teach them something about something I love and with their property was just incredible. My name is Ken Cromwell. I'm the Marketing and Communications Specialist at Jersey Jack Pinball. And today I'm excited to talk about our latest release, Toy Story 4 Pinball. There were so many rewarding, special things that had transpired throughout the whole process. But I mean, when you really think down to obviously working with Disney Pixar, it's just an amazing, it's an honor to be able to do that. I mean, it's big, but it's also, it's a big responsibility. We don't want to let anybody down. They don't want anybody to be let down, but to know that they were behind us every step of the way to kind of aid us in what we needed to do to make this game as best as it could be. It was really something special and unique that I haven't had any uh, you know, experience with prior to this, this release. We knew early on that the game would be played not just by hardcore pinball people, but there would be families who would buy the game who would never usually have a pinball machine and that there would be a lot of, shall we say, kids who would walk up to this game and want to play it based on the subject matter. I had to be really careful early on in the design of this to make sure that we weren't designing a product just for kids, that we were designing a real full-blown pinball machine, but that if your 10-year-old walks up to the game, he loves what the game is doing, and the game is able to give him something to somebody who doesn't play pinball every day, they stand there and they go two-handed, slap, 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 
This game has the ability for those people to get fun out of it. And yet it's also got the challenging tight shots built in that somebody who's really good, if they really want to beat this game, are going to have to learn and adapt to. When I look at this game, I see what I felt when I was six playing high speed. I want, I want a kid to be able to play this game and become attached to pinball like I was when I was six years old. And I want them to be able to play this game with their parents and maybe get, get, that, get that bug, that bug that we all have where, oh, I remember playing this game in my parents' basement. It was Toy Story. And now 20 years later, I'm playing pinball at every tournament I could possibly go to. This theme screams that for people, right? Because it's approachable. And the word I keep using is fun. I want people to have fun. Fun is the only thing that matters in pinball, whether it's theme or whatever it is. The bottom line is, I want you to have fun playing this game, and I hope you do. Hey, we grew up with these characters, Buzz and Woody and Bo Peep. I remember watching these movies, you know, go dating back into the mid-90s with my kids. And my kids watched it with my parents, who were their grandparents. And I fully expect down the road that my grandkids, which will be my kids' kids, will also be watching these movies. And then to have this kind of a, this timeless classic, this franchise in the pinball, it's amazing. It's unbelievable. The game is built around substantially the elements that are in the movie. In the pinball machine, you're at the carnival, but you're also attempting to do the things from the movie. I think one of the more fun aspects of the game is everybody loves Toy Story. Everybody loves a carnival. And Toy Story 4 brings that carnival atmosphere with all the characters that we've known and loved over all these years. And we're going to take you on an adventure with these characters that you're familiar with in a carnival setting. There's nothing like it in pinball. I, see, I always think like the movie has three main sets, I would call them, right? A carnival, an antique shop, and the RV park. That's basically where the movie takes place. And I wanted to make sure that the game felt like you were in those three places. There are uh, seven things that we call scenes from the movie is one of the things you're focusing on attempting to do. Yeah, so we use the word scene as a way to say, you're trying to complete, you're trying to play seven scenes, right? We also show like a scene after you do that thing. And when you've finished those seven scenes, you get to do a thing that's in the movie, which is near the end of the movie called Meet Me at the Carousel, which is a spectacular new take on how you end a pinball machine. The climax of the movie, essentially, where Buzz and Woody, they're both in separate groups, but they're all trying to meet at the carousel and that is represented by the wizard mode in the game. What's cool is it's actually two modes in one. So like if you play it, you play the buzz path and the real wizards will be the people who can get back around to it in the same game and play the woody path. Now, that's a lot harder to do than just getting it the first time, but I think people are gonna, people who are more pinball people are gonna wanna try to do that. But a casual, I'm hoping can get to the, to the mode, honestly. Like I, I don't wanna leave it out there where people are like, I'm never doing this. And by the way, we made that wizard mode substantially easier than some of our last games so that the average people in the world will eventually get to see it. And we did that by design. In my world, designing something in a pinball machine that no one ever sees except for three people is wasted effort and time on our part. If people can't enjoy what we do, we're in the wrong business. I will say this. It's so novel and different. Up till now, the way you end a modern pinball machine, going back 20 years, 30 years, was you threw every pinball you had in the game out on the play field, you whacked at the pinballs for a while, and that was the end of the game. Meet Me at the Carousel is a challenge. And if you com can complete the challenge, you get to a thing called fireworks, which is the end of the movie. No one's ever done anything like that before. So we're really looking forward to find, you know, how people enjoy what it was we've done. You know, when you step up to the game for the first time, you kind of size up the play field. You kind of have an idea of what you think you're going to expect, but there's more than meets the eye with Toy Story 4. And in fact, it's going to come from underneath the play field. And it's not just the Gabby Gabby mech that's going to pop up. You also have the Duke Boom Ramp. The Duke Boom Ramp is something that's special. Whenever you're able to kind of have a ball perform a task that you're not used to in pinball, it's exhilarating. You want to repeat that over and over again. And I'm telling you right now, the Duke Kaboom Jump Ramp going onto that stunt deck is something that does not disappoint. The big toy in the game, there's a character in Toy Story 4 named Duke Kaboom. 
and Duke Kaboom is a motorcycle stuntman. He uh, generally likes to pose on his motorcycle in the movie, and generally when he tries to do a jump, he misses, but occasionally he makes it. There is a device in the game called the Duke Kaboom Jump Ramp, and you activate the jump ramp and from the left flipper, you flip, the jump ramp is halfway up the play field. The ball becomes airborne and lands all the way on a back landing area that represents the end of the movie where he's flying through a carnival attraction. And you fly through the carnival attraction and get to come around. The first time you see it is quite spectacular. The jump is butter. It just is. But you know what? I advise you don't get too comfortable with that jump ramp because guess what? We've got a couple Benson posts that are individually controlled on the left and right of that entrance ramp that are going to make things just a little bit more interesting for you. The pinball machine takes place at the carnival, but there are other elements. For example, one of the elements, if you've seen the movie, is the toys have a nightclub inside a pinball machine called Tiki Party. And we were talking with the Disney people and we said we'd like to use Tiki Party in the game somehow. And they said, well, it's not really in the game that long, but we can get the original artwork for all of Tiki Party, the play field, the back glass, all of that. There is a thing you can do inside Toy Story where you get to play Tiki Party on the miniature display inside the game. And you're playing a 1960s EM inside a modern pinball machine and the Pixar people love it. It brought their static representation of that to life. Pixar supplied us with the art for the game that you don't actually see in the movie, but Pat was able to kind of rework it a little bit to make it an actual usable game. We created the physics for it so you can play the actual game and that's kind of where Tiki Party came from. When I think back of all of our releases, we don't really have video modes in our game. So this is one of the only video modes with the exception of something that we had done with Pirates that we've been put into any of these games. And then they kind of have the haptic feedback. You know, when you're hitting the pop bumpers on that screen, the pop bumpers are, are actually activating on the play field. You get that full field kind of effect. It's pretty fun. I think one of the coolest things is when you qualify Tiki Party on that 10 inch screen that's on the play field and you're able to qualify that and then get into the multi-ball after completing that task. The light show that you're gonna see during Tiki Party is something that you're not gonna forget. There's a drop toy in the game, Gabby Gabby. Early on we were with Disney and we asked, is there any one of the toys we could hit with a pinball? We realized we're not allowed to torture your your characters and they laughed on the other end of the phone and said gabby gabby you got a 10 inch screen which is the first in the industry inside a play field you got a jump ramp which is just an incredible experience you have a gabby gabby uh bash toy which is always fun to hit you have a spinning disc that has eight awards on it that is also a bit in a game of itself you like the wheel but you also can control which award on the wheel that you're going to get it's not just random you actually can control it by hitting the captive ball or shooting the inner loop. Unlike other games where the Wheel of Fortune just lights a feature, this Wheel of Fortune, depending on where it's currently resting, turns the features on and off. And of course the hot rails are back. We felt like this game being carnival, being Toy Story, being colorful, we couldn't not have the hot rails. And there's also another really interesting set of lights in the back of the game on a sign for the game Star Adventurer. It really pops. It's a really incredible looking set of lights that I think when you see it in action, you're going to be like, wow, that's, that's a really cool looking light setup to sort of represent the, the hole that Duke Kaboom jumps through. I wanted them to be able to experience the hot rails in this game. So I attached 12 different effects to the 12 different modes. So when you're in one of the carnival modes, there's a unique hot rail effect going during the mode. So it kind of brings you into our previous game, but in the Toy Story world. It is a testimony to modern 2020s pinball. You know, we do amazing things with our technology between the camera, 
between the ability to update our games over the internet, between our lighting system, between our video system. We have a video system that once again is simultaneously running a high resolution screen on the back glass along with a 10 inch monitor in this case in the game that's sitting there keeping up with its own set of things to do. As pinball continues to evolve, especially at Jersey Jack Pinball, you know, we're happy to announce that online connectivity is a full feature that we offer on every single model of game that's out there right now, especially, you know, Toy Story 4 with its LE and Collector Edition models. Connect online, compete against your friends, get achievements. It's, it's a really good time. There's a lot to do in this game. It is a very good representation of the movie, but it's an even better representation of state-of-the-art pinball. Welcome to the 21st century. One of the really fun tasks of the seven scenes in the game is rescuing Forky. There is a part of the movie at the end where there's a character called Gabby Gabby. She's locked up Forky and she's got her two hitmen, the Bensons, who are holding Forky hostage inside the curio cabinet. And one of the things you do in the game is rescue Forky where basically it's a three-shot combo, but it involves the jump ramp. It's a very fun mode to try, and when you fail it, you just want to try it again because you so badly want to rescue Forky. You get one shot to do it. It's a true combo. You got a little bit of a light show. There's a clip, of the, there's a clip from the movie that plays where Woody basically opens up this like cardboard box and Forky's there, he's like, Woody, you found me! You know, so it's like this little like kind of thing, and it gets harder too, so once you accomplish it once, it adds another shot to the combo. And that, that's a pretty good idea of, uh, of some of what's going on in the game. So for Toy Story 4, we've got two trim levels. Let's just take a minute and talk about both editions. So the limited edition, it's, it's limited to 5,000 units and you have a full featured game. It's gonna have everything that you would expect out of a Jersey Jack pinball machine. We go ahead and we consider the collector edition. What do we have? What's on top of that? Obviously on top of there is the topper, an epic topper with some fiber optics. You're celebrating the Duke Kaboom jump. It's, it's amazing. Everybody's going to really, really like that. We have the Sparkle Playfield, which is outstanding. A lot of people have appreciated that over our prior collector editions. It comes back for Toy Story 4. For those of you that like cabinet artwork, looks great on both packages, but that CE is going to give you the rad cals. That extra shiny, durable finish is really top notch. And then for even a little subtle touch, paying homage to the franchise, you've got the Disney Pixar shooter knob as a really nice feature. And that Collector Edition, again, has over 450 individually controlled RGB LEDs, not only inside the cabinet, but the outside of the cabinet, too. Again, this property is Pixar's crown jewel. And we had to do everything we could do to represent that property to the best of our ability so that some consumer who walked up to it understood that this was Toy Story. Okay, it wasn't, it wasn't good enough to be good enough. We had to hit it right on. We knew right away that if we were going to do Toy Story, we had to do it justice. And it wasn't about cutting corners. It was about doing everything that we could to do the, the license justice. And I think what we've done as a creative team here, we've got full movie assets. You've got call-outs, specific call-outs, custom calls. There are three voice actors that we acquired to do the speech for Toy Story, along with the call-outs that we have from the movie. We have Tim Allen who is doing Buzz Lightyear. There seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. I mean, it's Tim Allen. He's a huge star. And the fact that I got to sit with him while he was in the studio was just, it was an incredible experience. We have Jim Hanks does the speech for Tom Hanks when he has to do properties afterwards. And he sounds just like Tom. You are one skillful deputy. Working, first of all, with Jim Hanks was an interesting um, assignment because as everyone knows, Tom Hanks doesn't really do a lot of his own voice work when it comes to video games and other stuff like that. So his brother, who sounds basically just like him, got to do this for us. And that was really interesting because he was really into it. He was excited to be there. He was excited to be in a pinball machine. We have Annie Potts, who is the voice of Bo Peep. Who is the most Daredevil Canada has ever seen. She both does custom speech for the CEs that's only in the CEs and she has some of that speech that's in the normal games. 
I think a lot of people that own the CE are gonna be happy that Annie Potts comes in and she does a lot of custom callouts for the CE only, but don't worry if you're an LE buyer or you're an LE owner, you're gonna have some Annie Potts in there as well. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's an exciting thing to kind of have the actors that are just playing important roles within this license to actually be in your pinball machine, making callouts specifically for you while you're playing the game. It, it doesn't get any better. To have Tim Allen come in and do custom callouts, guys, that's a huge deal in my opinion. Any pots coming in and, and firing off for that CE, it's a huge deal. I mean, these are uh, prolific actors that have you know recognition that go beyond my scope of, of movie comprehension. And, and to be able to kind of work in some capacity with them was, uh, was really, really special. I can't think of any child walking up to this game and not just being enamored with the world of Toy Story and the fun it provides. And at the same time, I find there's enough depth and pinball stuff for everybody else. All of the world of pinball, the community, all the fans, all the tournament players. I think there's enough for everybody in this game. And that was one of my top, top requirements when I was putting together the rule set for this game. I, tr I tried very hard to blend approachable with some more advanced stuff, and at the same time, fun. In the game, you're shooting ramps to collect tickets. Tickets are spent to play carnival modes. Carnival modes have different ticket value, which also affects the difficulty of the mode. So a mode may be 10 tickets, and it may be kind of easy. A mode may be 200 tickets, and it may be a little bit harder, but you'll get a little bit more time to also complete the mode. Playing the modes and completing them like character collects. Character collects allow you to earn powers for Carnival Multiball. In the middle of the playfield, there are seven inserts. Those are what you're trying to do to get to meet me at the carousel. You're trying to play all seven of those inserts. Now, for some of the more advanced players, each of those seven inserts also have a completed task. So starting Buzz Multiball is playing Buzz Multiball, but getting the intergalactic jackpot in Buzz Multiball will complete the insert. Completing those inserts affect how meet me at the carousel work. Every once in a while when you do this for a living, this is my 24th coin-operated game, you are fortunate enough to have a vision that you then begin to build, that you're surrounded by a team that says, it would be cool if we did this, it would be cool if we did this, it would be cool if we did this. And when you're all done with it, there is a balance in those elements that is greater than the sum of its component parts. And this game is that. I haven't enjoyed working with a team of people, a team of programmers especially, as much as I've enjoyed working with this group of people, probably since Williams. These guys so badly want to make great pinball. And they understand that great pinball isn't made just for pinball professionals. Great pinball is made for everybody. I feel like I learned a lot about the psychology of pinball working with Pat Lawler on this game. I was able to start picking up on some of the nuance that some of the games from the 90s had that just sort of made you feel, it's like the, the, the dopamine in your brain of just adding one little speech call in one little spot can make it just feel so much more alive than if that speech call wasn't there. We were just in sync in this game, and it was a lot of fun to work very closely with him down the stretch on this game, and I'm very proud of how this game turned out, and I can't wait for everyone to play it. Everyone's been asking for it. Here it is. Jersey Jack Pinball, Disney, Pixar, Toy Story 4, Under Glass. What more could you ask for? So if I could offer any advice, I would encourage you to play Toy Story 4. Get out and find one near you. And if you have the means, I highly recommend trying to put one in your game room because it's one of those timeless, approachable themes that everybody that comes over is going to enjoy. And you know, if there was ever a point in your life where you wanted to have the coolest toy on the block, this is your opportunity. The only thing is you might need a bigger toy box. When you walk up to this game, it sounds like Disney, it speaks like Disney, it is Disney. Okay, there is no, no question that what we did does the franchise proud. I'm proud of you, cowboy. Toy Story franchise is a beloved property. As you know, you talked about the behemoth that it is to 
to children and adults. Do you ever feel a sense of responsibility or even anxiety taking Disney Pixar's behemoth and pulling it into the world of pinball? Any, well, you've been doing this a long time, but any anxiety or? Yeah, every minute. Every minute? Every minute. All right, again? <laughs> All right. <laughs> That was good, but we're one gonna take. One. We're gonna do it a couple more times. <laughs> good, but I think that's it. Yeah. Pro pro yeah. Projecting, as Ken would say. He's hiding over there. <laughs> All right, Pat. You had to identify with one Toy Story character. Who would it be, and why? Maybe, but who would it be if you had to pick? No, we're not gonna go there. <laughs> we're not gonna go there. We're not gonna do that. That's no. fine. Hard to shoot a video in a ruckus factory. Oh, that's right. Projecting. That's right. Ultra Pro projecting. That's I want to play with you guys. Well, that's what I want to do. This recording. <laughs> Let's play the game. That's what we're here for. We're here for pinball. <laughs> I'm with you. That works. I like it. <laughs> that, that was it. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah. All right. That one gave me the bumpers. Yeah, cool. Like that one gave me the bumpers. Sweet. We needed. We needed that. I appreciate you guys, man. You oh, guys are amazing. This is good.